Friends, let me begin by welcoming this TB summit and also the work of survivors against TB. I am a TB survivor myself, in fact a double survivor, I had TB twice, and I was looking back yesterday at the diary that I was keeping in 1984 when I had TB for the first time. It was a surprisingly simple affair. I was living at that time in a village of Uttar Pradesh called Palampur, and one morning mm. I found myself spitting blood, and so I looked at a book that you all know of, I'm sure, called Where There Is No Doctor, and I found that I had uh, many symptoms of TB. So I went to a local charitable hospital run by the Arya Samaj, and I was diagnosed with TB. So I uh, procured the necessary drugs and then returned to Palampur and more or less went back to work. From this experience, I learned that recovering from TB, uh, at least in non-drug resistant cases, is not a big deal, at least for somebody who knows what to do, who understands the disease and who has the will and the means to do it, including taking rest and good food. Now, that of course is not possible for everybody. It is often said that TB is a disease of poverty, and one aspect of that is that the prevalence of TB is about four times as high among the poor as among the rich, as according to the National Family Health, Health Survey data. This is a comparison between the poorest quintile and the top wealth quintile. But perhaps more importantly, another aspect is that it is much harder for a poor person to get over TB, especially if he or she has little education. And perhaps that is what the physician Edward Trudeau meant when he said that there is a rich man's tuberculosis and a poor man's tuberculosis. The rich man recovers and the poor man dies. That is, of course, a simplification but there is an important element of truth in it. So TB is definitely associated with poverty and also with lack of education. That much is clear, for instance, from National Family Health Survey data in India. Beyond that, not much can be taken for granted. For instance, the association between TB and gender in India seems very puzzling. If you believe the National Family Health Surveys, then the prevalence of TB was much higher for men than for women in 2005 at the time of the third National Family Health Survey. And then in the 10 years that followed, the prevalence of TB among men declined quite uh, substantially, while the incidence of TB among women increased so that the uh, ranking was reversed by the time of the fourth National Family Health Survey when the prevalence of TB was higher, much higher in fact, almost double for women than for men. And this is quite surprising. And similarly, uh, while it's perfectly understandable that the prevalence of TB uh, is highest in Bihar amongst all the major Indian states, it's less easy to understand why Kerala comes in second position despite having relatively high levels of income and education. So I'm hoping that other speakers will shed light on some of these patterns. Um, there is, of course, evidence of robust associations of some kinds. For instance, uh, there is a clear association between not only poverty and education and TB, but also uh, good nutrition. Undernourished people are more likely to get TB and also more likely to find it difficult to recover. And since the purpose of this summit is to discuss ways of providing better care to TB patients, I would say that one possibility is to provide better nutritional support to them or at least an option of nutritional support. I think there are already some initiatives being taken in this regard, but perhaps you can think of what more can be done. I don't think we can count on the public distribution system for this purpose because the PDS in India is still almost entirely focused on wheat and rice and that will not be of much help to most TB patients unless they are so poor that they don't have any 
food at home, um, I would not count on cash transfers. I hear that there's a scheme of cash transfers called uh, Nikshe Abiyan or Nikshe Yojna uh, for TB patients, but I don't think that is likely to translate very well into better nutrition. And I also uh, would be worried about the transfer being made through the uh, ADAR-based DBT payment system, which has proved so unreliable for so many other welfare schemes in India. Uh, one option would be to allow TB patients to uh, share the cooked meals at the local anganwadi or school, but that would create a risk of infection. And I think one should be very careful with that. So I suppose it would have to be some form of take-home ration system, either take-home uh, cooked food or food that uh, the patients can take home and uh, uh, eat at home. Uh, that I think could perhaps be done through uh, Anganodis. Uh, it would require some coordination between the um, Anganodi centers and the health department, but that is already happening in many states, and so it's not an impossible thing to do. We need, of course, also better nutrition for the population as a whole that would also help to contain and prevent the spread of tuberculosis, but that is a much larger subject, and since my seven minutes are already over, uh, I will stop here and once again uh, welcome this summit and uh, look forward to the uh, deliberations.